Hello people, what's up? This is episode 4 of my 110th rally car build and in this episode I'm going to be spraying the body shell. So I've got a Subaru Monte Carlo and I'm going to spray it the classic blue. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is get this out of the bag. So I've got my clear shell, I've got my decals. And I've got my window masks and you mustn't forget to put those on. That's probably one of the worst things you can do. And then I've got my spoiler, which on this car it comes in two pieces. So I'll need to spray those too. And the final thing that I get in the bag is the mounting kit for the spoiler as well. So some double-sided tape and a couple of little screws. Now, once you get one of these, first thing that you need to do is uh, wash out the inside of this. Get rid of any of the mold release lubricant that's on the inside of this, otherwise you're going to end up with a bad paint job. And you can see there's little specks as well of plastic where this has been cut away from the original mold. You can see those tiny little specks just in there. When it comes to washing this out, um, you just want to use warm water, a bit of dish soap and then always use the soft side of the sponge and be careful not to catch the inside with the uh, green part of the sponge or it's gonna scratch the surface. It's best to just use like a lint-free uh, cloth or a tea towel to dry any droplets off to prevent any water residue making marks on the inside. Um, and then to make sure it's thoroughly dry you can either use a hairdryer or just let it stand for a little bit longer. But it is important that you make sure that it's properly dried before you start trying to paint it. So once you've washed and dried it all, you should avoid touching the inside because your fingerprints are greasy and they'll stop the paint from sticking and it could ruin the paint job. But the next thing that you need to do is put the window masks on, so we'll do that now. So this is the masking kit here. And you can work out what's what just by looking at the shape of it. But if you're unsure, HPI does give you a sticker guide to show you what goes where. There's a few different methods to applying these. Um, some people use like a spray bottle with a bit of soap solution and it's so just a couple drops of dish soap and water uh, and they wet the inside and then you can slide the stickers into place. I always find that it's probably easier to just cut these out um, and that way I can get a corner off and line it up with the corner first and then peel it across. Um, that's just how I prefer to do it. So I want to make sure there's no bubbles at the edge of the matte skin. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that there's bubbles in the middle. But I don't want any bubbles on the edges because otherwise paint will get underneath. So now that that's all masked out, it's probably worth giving it like one more wipe out on the inside. I'm spraying these outside, so I put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of each one to stop them from getting blown over by the wind or blown away by the wind. And then when it comes to spraying, you want to make even passes and not hold it in one spot. So Thank 
Because I used the wrong type of spray paint, I left this to dry overnight just so it hardened a bit better. Um, when it comes to cutting this out, I use just an old pair of nail scissors. I've noticed that in a lot of hobby shops now you can get curved scissors which are slightly longer so they have better leverage on them. I'm going to start by following the lines on the car and cut it as it should be and then what I'll do is increase the size of the arches to fit the off-road tyres afterwards. Okay, so I've noticed this paint is actually flaking away from the back of this. So it could, could be interesting and I could get an interesting paint job out of this. So even when I'm cutting the straight lines, I tend to use the curved scissors, but facing away from the body. I find if you use straight scissors, what happens is because of the curvature of the bumper and stuff like that, um, the body shell will bend. And so with a straight pair of scissors, you don't necessarily get a straighter line. So it's best to just take it slowly um, with the curved scissors facing away from the body. So you can see that using the wrong type of spray paint is coming back to haunt me a little bit. Um, you can see it's chipping away on the edges where I've cut it so the adhesion is not very good to the inside of the polycarbonate. The other issue that I had is you can see it's dripped there. Now it's not going to be particularly obvious when the car is down and there's not light coming through the back of it. Um, but it's still not great. So one thing that I might do to try and fix this is to use a, I have got a gray polycarbonate paint. And so I'm gonna use that as an undercoat. Okay, so now that I've sprayed the body and I've given it time to dry, you can see that I used some polycarbonate color on the inside just to help strengthen the paint that was on there and also to back it so it wasn't so transparent. So the next thing I wanna do is the peel. One of the fun things about painting polycarbonate bodies is that the difficult part of spraying is taken care for you and that is getting the paint on flat because you spray on the inside. The 
paint hits the flat surface so you pretty much get a perfect finish even if you're absolutely terrible at spraying. You can see I got one little spot of grease in there and the paint just got rejected. So where do I start? I guess this comes in handy. So this is the sticker chart and you can see the number one is the front grill. So if I have a look, these are conveniently labeled and this is sticker one at the bottom. So there you go. I'm gonna pull that off and get to work. The nice thing about HPI bodies uh, they cut the stickers out, they all pre-cut for you, which is a real bonus. So after painting and finishing the shell, the last thing that I need to do is use the magnetic mounts to mount the body shell to the chassis. So in order to do this, what I've done is space the wheels out so that they're just touching the edge of the shell on both sides of the car. The plan is to take the body shell off a small dab of hot glue on each top and then place the body shell directly down and use the wheels to help line it dead center. Once it's been properly aligned I'll take the shell off and then reinforce the glue. Good. Just a little blob on the top of every one. Hopefully this is not too hot to the point where it melts the polycarbonate. If I just get it down and in place, whilst it's still warm, just get this to line up as dead centre as possible. Yeah, probably not a good idea to push on that whilst the hot glue's on there, just in case it is warm enough for it to. Uh, now the chassis, that seems to have bonded really quickly, but I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes, um, just so that hot glue can harden and cure, and then hopefully I should be able to get it out off without too much of an issue. If I peek through that rear window, you can see I've put enough in so that it's spot welded the top magnet, but it's not spilled over and locked the second magnet in place. Let's see if this comes off without tearing the paintwork off. Strong enough to lift the car. This hill, slide it. If you slide them, they pop straight off, which is obviously fine if you're drifting. So um, that's worked really quite well, to be honest with you. Obviously now the magnets are dead flat, but in order to stop them from sliding left and right, what I'm going to do is uh, put cling film over the top of these so that it stops it from binding and going into the gap. Um, and then I'm gonna put another blob of hot glue over the top of this and then pop it down again. Um, and then what, should, what, what I'm hoping is, is that I'll get a nice socket that will stop the shell sliding left and right. Um, so if I roll the car, the shell's not going to come off. So 
So I'm hoping now then, once the hot glue goes down on these, it will drip down, but it'll create a little socket around there. So then the magnet will lock it in place. And if I roll the car, I won't be able to slide the body shell. socket in there. So I think that's worked out pretty well with um, all things considered. Those are properly on there, very nice and secure. So that goes on nice and easy and finds its place. It won't slide off if you roll the car. So the only way to take it off is to lift it off. I do apologise for the delay in releasing this video, but I am moving house at the moment. As always, thanks for watching and join me next time where I finally get to put this car through its paces and see what it's capable of.